more than conquerors. We read Romans 8 verse 31 to 39. It was the year 1552, a full hundred years before uh, old Uncle Jan planted his historic foot on the Cape Coast. Two Portuguese ships, the St. John and the St. Jerome, set sail from the distant east, heavily laden with spices and trade goods, heading home to Portugal. The only route was past what would become Jan van Riebeek's Cape. When they reached the east coast of South Africa, a terrible storm arose, and the St. Jerome perished near the Umfschlatuzi River, where Riches Bay is today. Not a single person survived. The St. John, the largest galleon on the, in the trade fleet at that time, made it to the wild coast near Port St. John's, where it was smashed against the rocks. The town of Port St. John's is named after this disaster. 500 people, of whom 300 were slaves, survived the wreck. Their only salvation would be to walk from there to the nearest settlement, which was Inyamban, a full thousand kilometers along the coast. It was a nightmare journey, especially for the 200 wealthy Westerners who were not used to hardship. In the beginning, some of them were carried by their slaves. Flooded rivers, sand, a scorching sun, wild animals, cold, rain, and a lack of food all took their toll. The indigenous population in Mozambique mostly turned a cold shoulder. Help would not come from them. On one occasion, they were confronted by an impi of hostile warriors. The men saw Leo, Donna Leonora, the noble wife of the ship's captain, and demanded that she strip naked. She refused, but when she was forced, she buried her naked body in the sand up to her neck and refused to come out again. There she eventually died. Of the 500 people, only a bedraggled group of 22 finally reached the harbour of Inyamban, accompanied by a few natives. The survivors were sold to Portuguese traders by their guides for two and a quarter pennies each. Why did the local population refuse to help? Simply put, these Portuguese were slave traders. Many of the local inhabitants' families had been captured and sold as slaves by these very people. The wheel had certainly turned. In stark contrast to this sad story, Paul raises a song of victory. If God is for us, who can be against us? Unlike the Portuguese of the St. John, we as believers are more than conquerors through Christ, and we do not stumble into Inyamban like the few survivors of the wreck, but we marched in a jubilant triumphal procession. For the Romans, uh, a triumphal procession was nothing new, as every time a general won a great battle, it was his privilege to hold such a triumphal parade through the streets of Rome, accompanied by festivals and games, and everyone was exuberant. For us as believers, every day can be a triumphal procession, with all the celebrations that go with it. Remember, we are engaged in battle with the devil, the greatest enemy, but the general leading our fight is none other than Jesus Christ himself. The fact is, however, that he has already won the battle and we are now safe in his powerful protection. 
Christ is the conqueror, and nothing and no one can prevent God from completing His work of grace in our lives. Now we can wholeheartedly sing the hymn, Onwards Christian Soldiers. This fact also means that our distress will get God's attention. He has already done the first part by giving His Son, Jesus. He will never withhold His grace from us. This does not mean that as a believer I will never suffer, but the comfort is that even in my suffering I can rely on Jesus, for He is right beside me to help me through the suffering and to plead for me with God when I stumble. Look at how He helped Peter up every time the poor man fell, even when he denied Jesus when Jesus needed him most. Peter could rise in the power of God, and he did overcome. You and I can too. Does this mean that all my suffering will be over if I'm in Jesus? No, not at all. The fact is, however, that absolutely no circumstances can separate us from Jesus' love. In verses 38 and 39, Paul provides a list of the most frightening things that could potentially come between us and Jesus. Death and life, angels, powers, height of death, and all kinds of forces. These things place a terrible constriction around your heart. We can add to this list things that might be a nightmare for us, such as robberies, hijackings, unemployment, gang violence, fuel prices, climate change. However terrible these things may seem, in Jesus we can live securely. He will carry us through all these horrors of life and enfold us in His strong arms. Through Jesus' love, we can truly experience peace every moment of the day that surpasses all understanding. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that I can live in the full peace of your grace and that I can realize every moment that I'm also a conqueror in you. Amen.